Well, not only are we declaring our dependence on God, which we certainly need him, we can't do anything without him here on Independence Day, July 4th of 2020, but we're declaring our dependence upon God's body, the the local church, the body of Christ. And so Christ is our head. His body is the manifestation of the the body in people form where the body is um, operating under the control of the head, under the control of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 24 says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. That's one of the functions of the body of Christ is to stir each other up, to get you fired up to love other people and to do good deeds for them, to care for them. Boy, in a global pandemic time and in just in times in general, we need each other. We need good works. We need to encourage one another because there's evil all around. There's wickedness and death and sin and suffering. And so what a blessing to have brothers and sisters as we call each other people who are in our family, this new family of God we've been adopted into, that we're heirs of uh, the, the great inheritance that God has to give us. We are to gather together, stir each other uh, up in love and good works. And then verse 25 of Hebrews chapter 10 says, not neglecting to meet together. So he's saying, gather together. Don't neglect that. Don't neglect church service gatherings. Don't neglect small group gatherings. Don't neglect time in one-on-one fellowship. I think the addicted person needs all three of those. They need one-on-one counseling, one-on-one disciple-making, and they need to be discipled into by someone, and they need to be pouring out and discipling into others. At least at some point, they can do that. So that's the one-on-one relationships. But then I think the addicted person really has to have a small group of people a group that they are sharing their hearts with, uh, asking for uh, feedback, being real and being helped, being confronted when necessary. Uh, And they need that small group gathering to help them in those areas, just like they need the one-on-one. The one-on-one does that as well. But then the third part of this that the addicted person needs is they need the corporate worship, the corporate gathering of a local church family, where they're worshiping God, where they're praising God, where they're loving one another in a big group arena uh, or area or at the church building, whatever it may be, and that they're praying together and seeking God together, listening to his word and applying it and finding ways to, to connect with other people. And so Not neglecting to meet together is how verse 25 reads in Hebrews chapter 10. And then it says, as is the habit of some. That's the scary place for me when I'm working with people who are transforming from their addictive pleasures of choice. They can tend to uh, create a habit of neglecting time with other believers. And when you do that, you're just going to pursue your own thing. Like Proverbs 18.1 says, you're going to break out against all sound judgment. So it's scary to me when I, when I think about the local church is the answer. It's the body of Christ for those who are addicted. It's something they need to be dependent upon. They don't need to think, I'm independent from that. I can do my own thing. I can neglect to meet together as is the habit of some. If they think that way and they declare their independence, then they're going to miss out on what they need in the body of Christ. And I would say not just the big meeting, but they need these smaller group meetings for encouragement, for support, for confrontation, for accountability, for structure, for people to speak into their lives. And they need the one-on-one disciple making.